What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com continuing our series on creating different kinds of animations inside of SketchUp. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to create an animation with a working forklift with the extension animator. All of the example files for this series can be found at the sketchupessentials.com slash animation. So if you want to download those and follow along with any of the videos we've done in our animation series, you can do that. Again, that's at the sketchupessentials.com slash animation. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so for this animation, we're going to use the extension animator from Fredo 6 in order to animate this forklift, picking up a palette and putting it on this first level. You can download animator from the Sketchication website. So this is a pretty simple exercise, but also it's a little bit complicated and you kind of have to think about how all of your movements tie together. So really all we're going to do is we're going to use animator and we're basically going to use a number of different uh, unit movements and it's going to be the translate movements in order to do this. And so if we look at this, we really need a couple different movements. So, and first of all, model credit. So you can find all of these different models in the 3D warehouse. So the, uh, the forklift is the gable stapler by Burkhard Heimlich and the pallet rack assembly can be found with all of the different boxes and stuff. So it actually has a few different components from a few different authors, but it's in the warehouse as warehouse shelving from Peter. And you can see how all the individual pieces, the different authors show up in your credits section of your model. And so what we're gonna do now is we're going to set this up and the first thing we need to do is just take a look at our overall animation because really what needs to happen here is first of all this needs to move forward so that the forks move inside of this box. I've modified this model so I've come in here and I've just grouped all of this having to do with this piece so that I can move it up and down and it moves as if it would in real life kind of along this track here. So you may need to go ahead and group that if you're going to follow us along or download the example file. But what we want to do is we want to start by opening up animator and using the clip editor. So in order to do this, what we're going to do is we're just going to click on this little button right here inside of that extension. That's going to pop up your clip editor where you can add all of your different movement sequences. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by adding a unit movement. And so what that's going to be is that's just going to be a movement of an object inside of animator. So in order to do that, we're going to click on the little box right here, we're going to click on the button for new movement. And so when we do that, what that's going to allow us to do is that's going to allow us to select the object we want to move. And notice how when we mouse over different objects, um, we're getting these little bounding box in, in, boxes in here. That's basically this indicating to us the hierarchy or the way that things are grouped inside of this model. But in this situation, what I want to do is I want to click somewhere on this forklift and I want to pick the very top group that contains my whole forklift. And that's basically us telling this we we want this whole forklift to move. And so now what we want to do is we just want to create a translation. So this is just a simple movement from one point to another point. And we have this forklift selected, so that's going to be the object that moves. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to click on translation. We're just going to single click somewhere. I'm going to click on the ground in this case. I'm just going to move this along the red axis just like this. And then I'm going to click right here. And so now, if I was to click the play button, this will simulate the movement of this object where it's sliding in underneath this pallet. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to save the sequence and exit. And so you're going to notice that this is now going to show up in your timeline on the left hand side of the page. So if I click play, you can see how my forklift is going to move from one point to another over the course of two seconds. Well now, what we need to do is we need to animate the fork moving up as well as the pallet moving up. And in this case, we're gonna set this up as just a linear sequence. So this is gonna move here, then the fork is gonna move up and then everything's gonna move over and it's gonna drop this box. So the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna add a second unit movement. It's just gonna be a new movement. And what we need to do is we need to select both the forks as well as the pallet. So to do that, we're gonna click right here we're going to select the option for fork assembly. So that's the assembly that I created in order for us to um, be able to move this separately from the rest of the forklift. And so we're also going to go back into selection mode. We're going to click here and we're going to select our palette group. So you can see how now I have bounding boxes around the forks 
as well as the box. And so now all we need to do is we just need to create the translation. So in this situation, the translation is going to be from this point, and we want this to move up and I'm gonna hold the shift key to lock this to the Z axis. We want this to move up until it's to the same level as this, uh, as this palette bottom level. So we're just gonna click right here. So now we have our up and down translation movement. So you can see how this is now moving up. So we're gonna click on save the sequence and exit. Well now if we zoom back out and we look at this and we click the play button, this is gonna roll in for two seconds and it's then going to come in here and it's going to um, basically animate the movement of this object right here as well as this object right here. Notice that one of my uh, one of my handles got picked up over here. We'll fix that in a minute by moving that out of this group. Um, I'm not really worried about it for right now. It's pretty easily fixable. Um, but one thing you may want to think about doing is you may want to think about saving your model. And you may also want to think about saving your animator changes by clicking on this little button right here as you go is now we need to come in and create another movement se sequence of this object moving over here. So in order to do that, we're just gonna click on insert a unit movement. We're gonna add a new movement again. And for this one, we're gonna select the whole forklift group as well as the whole palette group. So you wanna make sure you have both of these selected when you do this so the translation works properly. But we're just gonna add another translation and we're just going to click on this point right here, move our mouse, and I'm gonna hold the shift key to lock this to the red axis. And I'm gonna move this until my palette is on this shelf. And the palette is a little big for the shelf. I'm not really super worried about that for right now. But what this did is this now gave us a translation where this moves forward and places the palette on the shelf. And we're gonna go ahead and click on the button for save the sequence and exit. So now, if we were to play the whole thing, we move forward, our forks move in here to pick up the box, and then we move forward right here. Well now, what we need to do is we need to animate the forklift moving backwards. So we're gonna add another unit movement. We're gonna select just our forklift this time. And we're just gonna add another translation of our forklift moving back, like this. And we're gonna go ahead and click on save the sequence and exit. Now, this will move the palette in and then the forklift will back up. And one thing we might wanna think about doing is we might wanna add a pause in there because it kind of bounces a little bit. So what we may wanna do is we may wanna take this and just move it down so that the start time is seven seconds. So then we'll get a little bit of a pause right here before this backs up. And then finally, let's animate the forks moving back down lower to the floor. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're just going to insert a unit movement, select our forks, and then I'm just gonna hold the shift key to lock this to the blue axis, and I'm gonna move the forks down to right here. And we're gonna go ahead and click on save the sequence and exit. So if you wanted to, you could click on this fork movement, and you could actually set this so that it starts at eight seconds instead of nine seconds. So if you were to do that, then our fork would start moving down while our forklift is moving backwards. So you can see how those animations can move concurrently so they can happen at the same time. So the same thing could happen back here if we wanted it to where we could overlap this movement with the forward movement if we wanted to. And this is a little close, so it's probably a bad idea in this situation, but you could definitely set that animation to overlap so this is lifting this up as it's driving forward. So and one other thing we may wanna do is we may wanna set a camera. So let's say, for example, that we want our camera view to be from right here. Well, all we would do is we would just click on the button for insert a camera to your timeline. We would click on capture current view camera and then click the checkbox. Now, and we actually want this camera to start at zero seconds, not at 10 seconds. 
So now this whole animation is going to be from the perspective of that camera view. And we could add another camera view if we wanted to. So let's say that we wanted our camera to kind of shift over here so we could see a little bit better what's going on. You could insert another camera and I'm going to click right maybe right here. So we'll insert this sequence at four seconds. We'll just click on new camera. And we'll say that we wanted this view to be right here. So we'll just capture this current view. So now as this is going, this will transition your camera view from the one camera view to the other while we watch this animation. So one other thing I want to do really quick is I want to save all of the changes that I made by clicking on this button. Then I want to click on the button for exit tool because I want to go into this fork assembly. And you can see how over here we've got this handle group and the handle group is inside of my forks assembly. And so I just want to take that handle group and I want to move it out of that fork assembly. So I'm just going to move it into the group above just by clicking and dragging that into the group above. And we may need to fix the location of that as well because it got moved a little moved around a little bit by the animator extension. So we're just going to move this right here. So now that's outside of that group so it won't be a part of the animation anymore. So now if we go back inside of animator and run this and you really shouldn't run this with the outliner open you can see how now that handle is no longer in that group so that was an easy fix. And so all I want to do at this point is I just want to export this to a video. So we're just going to click on the button for generate a video for the film and that's going to pop up the video generation menu and remember that you do need to have FFmpeg installed. I will try to remember to link to the video about doing that in the notes down below. That's going to allow you to actually export this but I'm just going to select this and I'm just going to call this forklift animation and we'll leave everything else pretty much the way that it is. Um, we'll go ahead and leave this with the viewport dimensions. Um, We'll click a test image real quick just to see how big this is going to be. So this image is going to be about this size, which is going to work fine for what we're trying to do right here. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to click on generate video. What that's going to do is that's going to export 251 frames, making up a 10 second video. And it's going to stitch them together into the video type that I had selected. In this case, I think MP4. So we're just going to let this work and this will give you a preview of how long it's going to take in order for this to work. I find this can be somewhat inaccurate. So a lot of the time it ends up taking a little bit longer than the time that they have in here. But we're going to go ahead and let this work and then we'll come back and take a look at the video. All right, so the forklift animation or the forklift video animation is now ready and we can either click on the button to open the folder or we can just click on the button right here to open the file that was created. And so you'll notice if we take a look at this that we have this animation where our forklift moves in, picks up the box, moves back, and then the forks move back down. So this was really easy to create and maybe in a future video we'll uh, render something like this using V-Ray. So you can see how this just took a couple steps and it was really easy to create. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. If you wanna download the finished product as well as the example file, make sure to check out my page at thesketchupessentials.com slash animation. Uh, if you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.